Hello everyone, my name is Mohamed Maganem and I will be presenting a joint work with Adnan Saud and Antonio Loria on the distributed hybrid gradient based estimation. I will start, um, I will start recalling a very classic identification problem in which we have a linear regression model where y is the output, psi is an input, um, all called regressor and theta is an unknown parameter that we would like to estimate. Uh, throughout this work, the regressor psi is assumed to be bounded. Here we can define uh, a copy of our linear regression model that involves an estimate of the output, an estimate of the state and uses the actual regressor signal. Then we can define two errors, the output errors and also the estimation errors. There are two ways in the literature to update or to design uh, dynamical behavior for the estimate uh, of the parameter. The first one is when viewing the regressor as a continuous time signal and we take this update law that minimizes the error um, of, the output, uh, of the outputs. <clears throat> That's why we call it a gradient based estimation. Uh, it is well established that the estimation error or the parametric estimation error is uniformly exponentially stable if and only if the regressor signal psi verifies a continuous time persistence of excitation condition, which is given here. Similarly, if we view our regressor signal as a discrete time signal, we can update our unknown parameter or the estimate of the unknown parameter uh, using this discrete time gradient based update law. And we know that um, we achieve parametric estimation exponentially fast if and only if uh, the discrete time regressor verifies the discrete time persistence of excitation condition that is given here. Now, the first message of this talk is that we are able to um, propose a more efficient, what we call hybrid gradient algorithm that works in cases where the aforementioned algorithms do not. And for this, we introduce this simple example where we have here a regressor signal that has a continuous time evolution on some intervals of time, but also at the end of each interval, it has a discrete evolution. So it, it instantaneously jumps and change value. So when we view this regressor signal as a continuous time signal, meaning that we ignore what happens in at isolated points. We use the continuous time high, uh, the continuous time gradient algorithm, and we obtain the curve in red for the estimation errors. We can see that we don't uh, solve the estimation problem. Similarly, if we focus only on what happens during the jump times, and we view our signal as a discrete time signal, and we use discrete time update law for the parameters. Uh, the result is not good neither, we, we don't converge. However, if we take advantage of both behaviors and we update our parameters estimates continuously during the continuous behavior and discreetly during the discrete behavior, we can see that things work much better and we are able to converge. So to formally uh, formalize this, we view our signals as hybrid signals and for this, we need two variables, the t variable that captures the uh, normal time, uh, the flow, and the j variable that captures the jump. And we say that our regressor signal is defined on a hybrid time domain in which we have two variables. And the hybrid time domain is a union of intervals and the jump uh, index at which uh, the interval of flow occurs. So, our algorithm can be expressed as follows. If our regressor jumps, we update discreetly using the same update law, uh, the same discrete update law. And if our regressor flows, we update continuously. And we can show that the origin of the estimation error is uniformly exponentially stable, provided that a hybrid persistence of excitation condition holds. So pretty much a hybrid persistence of excitation condition is a sum of the continuous time and the discrete time excitation conditions at the appropriate um, time instances. 
uh, we will we will write the expression uh, in, in the coming slides. Um, in this work, um, we want to push the analysis further. So we want to consider a network of linear input output regression models. So for for each uh, system in the network, we have outputs and we have inputs. However, the whole systems share the same unknown parameter that they want to estimate cooperatively. And here we assume that the regressors have the same hybrid time domain. This is not a very strong assumption because we can always enforce it by creating virtual jumps if, if an agent does not jump. Um, and here we can define a local estimator. For each agent, we have uh, this uh, estimator model. There is just a copy. And now the, the challenge is how can we design an update law for this estimate of agent I cooperatively meaning that we take into account what the other estimators are doing in order to guarantee that all the estimators reconstruct the parameter theta exponentially fast. So this finds a natural application in the context of large scale systems where we have a large scale system such that the system of distribution of electricity and we have local sensors in different areas that are very separated. And each, on each local sensor, we have a local estimator that uses the local data. However, the estimators communicate between them via Wi-Fi or any communication uh, technique and exchange uh, their information in order to try to have a better estimation of the common parameters because they are common parameters of, of, of the system. Another application in when using one estimator however we have all data stored that we simulate using virtual estimators and those estimators that are virtual communicate with the actual estimator in order to improve its convergence uh, properties this is what we call this fits in what we call concurrent learning by based control another very simple motivation is if we have a homogeneous network of robots they share the same uh, parameters because they are homogeneous. And every robot try to estimate uh, his parameters, but take advantage of the presence of other uh, robots to communicate with them and try to enrich its data that allows him to uh, estimate his parameter. So in existing work, this problem has been studied and mostly for continuous time case. So in our uh, work we generalize it to the hybrid case and also in existing works there is no estimation of the convergence rate which we provide in, in our approach. So um, as we said earlier we have regressors now we have a network of regressors they have the same domain so whenever they jump we update discreetly and our update law now is composed of two terms the first term is just the local gradient term that tends to minimize um, the output errors plus another term that involves the other uh, agents so what we call a cooperative term uh, we do the same thing along the flows and here the cooperative terms we they are coupled with this parameter a that indicates whether there are there is actually a an interconnection between agent i and agent k so if a is equal to zero, there is no communication. If a is bigger than zero, then there is a communication. And our problem now is what are conditions on the graph tailored to the sequence of regressors that allows us to guarantee uniform exponential stability of the estimation errors. The graph conditions are the following. So we assume that our graph is weakly connected, is unidirectional and weakly connected. Weakly connected meaning that if we ignore the uh, directions, of the interconnections we end up with a graph that is connected and we also know that every weakly connected graph can be decomposed into strongly connected subgraphs and among the strongly connected subgraphs we identify the leading strongly connected subgraphs so as here in this picture we can see that this net subnetwork of four agents form a strongly connected subgraph because there is a path from any agent to any other agent and it's leading strongly connected component because it does not provide information it does not receive information from the other agents it only give so it's a leading component and also 
Uh, for example, this unit is a strongly connected subgraph, but is not a leading one because it receives information. Uh, our main assumption is the following distributed hybrid PE condition. So every strongly connected subgraph that is a leader has to verify this uh, hybrid PE condition. Furthermore, under um, our graph condition, we can decompose our Laplacian matrix as follows. So here we identify the Laplacians of the strongly connected subgraphs that are leaders. So they don't receive information. That's why we have zero here and they provide information. That's why we have a term here in ML. So our discrete time update parameter delta has to verify those conditions. So we can always find delta such that these uh, two conditions hold under which we are able to provide uh, uniform exponential stability to show uniform exponential stability, provide an estimate of the convergence rate and also a strict Lyapunov of function. So now to conclude, let me show some simulations. In the first uh, set of simulations, we have a network um, of agents. None of them is hybrid persistently exciting. So none of them is able to estimate the parameters on its own. However, if we interconnect them according to an all to all graph, we can see that they all converge. Another um, situation is when we have a network of um, linear regression model, each of them is hybrid PE. So there is no problem here. Each of them can independently estimate and reconstruct the parameter. However, if we interconnect them, we improve the convergence properties. So you can see here. <clears throat> so as a conclusion, in this work, we propose the distributed hybrid gradient algorithm for a network of linear regression models. We showed uniform exponential stability uh, and there an appropriate distributed hybrid persistence of excitation condition. And in future, we would like to explore these two directions. So first, we would like to treat the distributed estimation problem for more general uh, hybrid models instead of only a linear input output uh, model. And also, we would like to treat the case where the graph along the continuous time evolution is different from the graph along the discrete time evolution. So along the flows, we have one communication graph and along the jump, we update the parameters and we use another communication graph. So here the analysis became um, more challenging. Um, so with this, I end my talk. Uh, thank you for your attention.